welcome to the Dean Vaughn Music Podcast Show, Rob Cottle. How are you doing, sir? Well, I'm good. I'm good. You look great. And you really do look like Rod Stewart, you know. Curse and a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> and you play, do you play guitar as well? Um, I was actually a bass player before I did this. Okay. But okay. I, yeah, I play, a little bit. I play a little bit guitar. And what was the name of the band you were in? I, I read about it. Uh, well, actually, I was in a, a band that was on RCA called The Breaks back in the 80s when MTV was really MTV. And then I was in another band that uh, we had a few record deal offers, but um, somebody screwed it up in the band. Let's just put it that way. The <laughs> yeah. With Sean, now, a band called The Willies with Sean Lane. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And I was listening to your interview. You were talking about playing with Joe Walsh, and you've played with some uh, celebrity musicians. Uh, Maybe just yeah. kind of brush over who you who you played with and, and what have you done? Uh, actually, Joe Walsh lived in Memphis for a couple of years. Okay. Back in those crazy days, and my brother and I were uh, asked to do some session with him, so we worked, we worked in the studio, which was a uh, which was a real it was a blessing. Actually, Joe Walsh, James Gang was the very first record I bought with my own money I earned. James so that Gang. Was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And he oh, was yeah. a wonderful guy. And I was good friends with uh, John Entwistle from The Who. John Entwistle met him once. Yeah. Uh, I hung out with uh, the guys in Leonard Skinner when a lot of them were still alive. Uh, right, Van Zandt. Cheap, cheap Trick. They, cheap both, I played down on Bill Street. I was a bass player. I fronted a band down on Bill Street. And we jammed. A lot of people came down to sit in. Yeah. Have you always been a singer? Uh, no, I was more of a bass player than I was a singer. Yeah. When did you start singing? Um... Well, I yeah, sang a little bit. Yeah, um, I sang a little bit when I first started playing music. I sang a lot of harmony when I first. I went to, I went to high school and uh, junior college in Orlando. We moved yeah. around a lot growing up. We're like service people. Our father was a field scientist for Mobile, so we we're like service people. But I moved to Memphis. Uh, my parents moved halfway through my senior year in high school, mm -hmm. and I moved to Memphis to study music. And I was going to sit out a year, uh, keep from paying out of state tuition. Gotcha. And I just started playing around Memphis, and then before you know it, uh, my brother, the drummer, and I, we got a record deal with RCA Records with the breaks. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember the name of the song. What was the name of the song you had? We had, we had uh, She Wants You. Was she Wants yeah, You. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I, was, I was reading a little bit about you. CME was a music in Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee. And, uh, and they said people would stop you on the street in airports and ask for your autograph. Yeah. They really thought you were Rod Stewart. Does that still yeah. happen? Does that still happen? Oh today? yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's a pretty amazing, you know. I know, I know, you know. I'm older, but I'm not 78 yet. <laughs> make it, make it that That's far. right. Rod's yeah. 78 now, right? 78. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still rocking. Good, you know. God bless him. God bless him, man. He yeah. is. He yeah. is amazing, uh, sir. Rod Stewart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me, so back when you started singing, and so you, you did a, a, an album with R, RCA Records, and when did you decide you were going to do this Rod Stewart impersonation thing? Um, after I went through a few bands, actually when the breaks broke up, I, play, I played with a bunch of Memphis legends, a bunch of cats from Stax Records. Okay. Uh, 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 ben Colley, who was the only surviving uh, Remember the Otis Redding Bar Case plane crash? I was in a, a band with him. Oh, wow, wow, wow. One of the best singers in the world, Eddie Harrison. Uh, he had a band, he was on Stack Street called Eddie Harrison and the Short Thugs. He, uh, he still plays around Memphis. He's probably got to be 80 years old, but amazing singer. And I didn't sing, I just played bass and watched them. You know, and watch them entertain people is probably where I learned a lot of my, you know, my chops as far as entertaining the crowd. They were amazing, amazing entertainers and singers and players. Uh, and then uh, I got put a band together called The Willies, and uh, we had three record deal offers from MCA, QMI, wow. okay. and Fanic Re Records, and they, they uh, we signed with QMI. Well, we were gonna sign with QMI, and they went out of business shortly thereafter. And then the keyboard player said, I'm gonna go try to get my own record deal, and then Sean Lane, the guitar player, he ended up getting a deal with Warner Brothers. He played, uh, he was like a kind of a fusion kind of artist, so he ended up getting his own record deal. So the band kind of fell apart. Gotcha. And I, I had my first son, and I was uh, went out on the road with the band, went to Vegas and saw Legends in concert, and I was like, found out how much money they were making compared to <laughs> playing bass, and I said I could do that because 
I was singing bass. I was playing bass and singing those songs anyway. So. And did you know what you wanted to do when you saw the uh, legends? You know, while you're like, you knew you were going to be Rod Stewart at that time. Yeah, because pe people always told me since I've been like 16 or 17, you, you look like Rod Stewart. You know, so, <laughs> and my voice, my voice just sounds that way. You know, it's not. You like do I, have the UK uh, accent. Yeah. Oh, that's only, that's only when I'm. That's only when I talk about it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm pretty much a southern guy really yeah yeah i can yeah. i can hear that i can and if you yeah. know carrie i figured you were a southern guy <laughs> oh yeah 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 <laughs> but i think it's amazing that um watching you play your your gestures and you uh you uh, mimic him almost uh, to the t now did you have to study rod stewart to become rod stewart have you watched a million videos and just spent hours and hours and hours on his wardrobe and his yeah. antics and his moves? Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, I always say it's a work in progress. I mean, uh, when I first started watching Rod Stewart videos, I was like, I could never do that. <laughs> so, really, I mean, it was, uh, but he was more choreographed back in the 80s when, you know, and the video, was, back then it was like, uh, you couldn't really, you couldn't go online to YouTube. There was no YouTube. So I could go and rent a VHS from right. uh, Blockbusters. And there was like two <laughs> or three videos out and you studied all those, you know, and, and, right. uh, right. you know, and, and tried to get the mannerisms and like, I always say it's still a work in progress. Uh, I, you know. I think life, life is a work in progress. You know, yes, just going going through life uh, one day. I, I never know what I'm doing from one day to the next. You know, I didn't know I was going to be a podcast show host either. I'm a lead singer in a rock and roll band. Oh, and I, okay. You know, I'm a songwriter, and, and I'm actually I was in the lead singer for Danger back in Hollywood, and uh, oh, wow. we, yeah. we were playing the Roxy, the Whiskey, all this crap. You know, and I now that I'm older, I'm kind of um, branching out a little bit, thinking this would be great to uh, bounce into my career again. And my music career and I get to talk to people like you and talk about music and stay within my you know within my realm if you will yeah and I, and I like talking to other musicians oh I do too you know that's that's the cool yeah. thing about, you know about playing music you know right. you get to meet so many different you know so many different people and and hear everybody's got a story everybody that's been doing this for a while you know I mean I'm just I sit them out and just think I'm blessed that people still still want to pay money to come see the show you know? <laughs> it's amazing yeah we actually have uh katja rickerman rod stewart's the tall blonde that played with rod stewart for 14 years she actually plays in my show a lot okay uh, okay she lives in la she lives in la gotcha uh, yeah and um and uh, uh you know i've got got to meet a lot of my idols you know uh, as far as like carmen apathy you know we've never actually met in person but we've chatted on the phone quite a few times and i met carmine at the uh the nam show what a nice yeah. guy yeah he is a really super nice super guy. nice signed yeah. autographs everything yeah. yeah and i got to meet i got to hang out with ronnie wood a couple of times which i bet you he was back. free he was freaking out <laughs> yeah you know what he, we tried to get him to sit in with the willies and he said he, he that was just like years ago he yeah. said he just flew from concord and he flew straight to memphis and uh jw whitten who used to manage Cherry lee lewis brought him out to hear our band the willies and i tried to get him to sit because we did like stay with me and maggie me tried to get him up to jam and he was like man i haven't been to bed for days <laughs> Uh, Ronnie Woods, man, that guy's lived a hard life, man. He's still going. Yeah, yeah. super. What a wonderful cat, though. Man, Aren't the, are the Stones still playing? Are the, is Ron still playing? Oh, yeah, they, they just got to put a new record out. Oh, Brand geez. new record. What are yeah. they, like, and the it's 70s? Really, it, it, uh, 80s? Yeah. It, in their 80s? It, 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 a, it turned 80. Just turned holy 80. smokes. It's, like, it's called Angry. Check out that song. It's really amazing. I was like, wow. Angry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, it's a great song. Yeah, that's that amazing, man. That's amazing. You know, and I'm really honored that you you got to do the show. Um, I was talking to Carrie, and I, I go, "Wow, you know, I'm really ramping things up right now." And you're really a great kickoff too. I'm going into season three. I'm only doing ten episodes a season, but I've, I've done some heavy metal bands. I've done a violinist, um, and I've done. I'll talk to industry people as well. It doesn't matter if if it has to do with music. I want to talk. I want to talk to them. And, yeah. you know, and uh, talking with people like you, I, I can hear a little bit of the history of what you've done, who you've played with and your experiences. And, and you know, and when you were a kid, now, when you were a, a young kid, were you playing music and what was your aspirations? Uh, you know, when I was, uh, like I said, my father was a field son. We moved to a lot of different places growing up, but I got a guitar, I think, in the sixth grade. 
you know. Okay, so it was like a cheap, cheap little guitar. Right. And I used to right. listen to records and try to pick up stuff. But I know I did I played in a band when I was in the sixth grade in wow. Newburgh, North Carolina, and then and then we moved somewhere else, and I never played music again after I got out of high school. Okay. And this guy, this guy goes, uh, uh, because I, you know, I sit around and play. I just played in my room, and this guy goes, "Once you get a bass, we'll start a band." So I was going yeah. to, I was going to junior college. So I went out, got a sixty-one uh, P bass. Oh yeah. In the, it was in the paper like one hundred and fifty bucks. And Fender, and, Fender P bass was a fretless yeah. or a, it, all natural it, no, wood. No, it was it wasn't fretless, but yeah. And and uh, two weeks later, I was playing clubs around Orlando. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, how old were you I, then? I, I was probably eighteen, okay. you know, eighteen, yeah, yeah, just out of high school, yeah. Well, I started so playing. Play, yeah, I started ahead, playing when I was fourteen years old. If I was fifteen, I was uh, playing a Farfisa keyboard. I played the keyboard. <laughs> I remember, that. Yeah. I remember the Farfisa and had this little. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I joined my first rock and roll band when I was fourteen years old, and uh, and the guys were in the garage. I said, guys, we you know let's go play Hollywood. You know, my aspiration was to go down and play Hollywood. And within two years, I was headlining the Roxy and the Whiskey and Gazaris down there. Wow. wow. And, and I became the lead singer of the band. And, and I'll tell you that story some other time when we're hanging out, having a beer, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the music music takes you in different directions. But to uh, right now, tribute bands in Las Vegas. I can't even imagine the kind of money that uh, you guys are making, um, you know, and the opportunities you got i know i saw your legend show you were playing with uh, freddie mercury yeah queen, yeah queen and uh who else were you playing with uh, uh elton Del john elton and we john. did one with uh, george michael we did another one with uh an adele and a dusty springfield yeah and and yeah. anyway it's just yeah it's, it, the, the, the british thing the whole british thing was really the cool. london invasion kind of thing yeah Bring, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah bringing london yeah, and to I've vegas yeah, and I've done a, I've done one in Australia. I did one with an Elton John, a great Elton John there. And another guy did David Bowie. And there's another cat in L.A., David Brighton, who's an amazing David Bowie. He's he's great. He's great. I saw a picture uh, with you and uh, a David Bowie tribute. Would that have been him, maybe? Uh, you have, you maybe. have some press. You have some press yeah. out there. Yeah, there's there's probably with me and the cat De uh, Jeff Duff who does it in Australia. He's done like 30 albums. He's like. He's been around forever. He's a big star in Australia. Wow. Yeah. Lois and I just spent a month in Australia about a year ago. Her brother lives there. And we're, we're looking to buy a buy an island out there. Like no. Was, you know, right Isn't across beautiful? from... Oh, my Isn't God. Beautiful? Yeah, yeah. Aborigine yeah. islands out there. We're on Bundy. Bundina? Yeah. Bundina yeah. Island? And, oh, yeah. my God. Well, I've never heard of it, but I didn't mean anything. There's yeah. so many places. There's, there's yeah. a thousand islands out there. Yeah, I've been well, touring Australia for like ten years, and I I just love it there. Aren't it's the people amazing. just aren't the people so nice? Yeah, out there? yeah, they are. The people and are and mostly English people, so they love Rod Stewart. You know, so, they love yeah. Rod Stewart. They love Rod yeah. Stewart out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I I love Australia, um, yeah. and because Lois is from Australia, my other half. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And she, of course, we all love Rod Stewart. And when when I got the opportunity to. Uh, interview you i was talking to carrie i go god i could play almost every rod stewart song and love everything really? yeah <laughs> and what i was man what a great interview so far i want to listen to um rob cottle doing a medley of songs by rod stewart and this is a really great uh, uh what i call a reel and uh you get to see a little bit more of what rob cottle really does he's amazing check it out Tonight's the night we're having some fun. We're videoing tonight, as you can see. So be sure to act like it's a, the greatest thing since the greatest thing, if you know what I'm saying. Stay away from my window. Stay away from my back door, too. Disconnect the telephone line Relax, baby, and know that line Pick up your shoes and sit right down Loosen up that 
pretty French gown Let me pour you a good long drink Well, baby, don't you hesitate Because tonight's the night Oh, yeah It's gonna be alright Cause I love you, girl Deny your man's desire Cause she'd be a fool To stop this kind Spread your wings And let me come inside Because tonight Tonight Oh yeah It's gonna be alright Cause I love you girl Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're doing we're doing a tour starting in April. We're doing um, Australia. We're doing three months in Australia again. Awesome. Yeah. Now I have yeah. we have a lot of fans in Australia that watch the Dean Vaughn show um, because oh, cool. I, Very I met good. a lot of yeah. yeah. So what I'll do is I'll put together your show dates and okay. I'll, I'll show it um, during the podcast show so everyone knows when you're playing. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll get that to you. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. And I checked yeah. out your website. Beautiful. Good. Nice job. All the information's cool. there. Um, I had no problem finding out more information about you. Um, and real, how did you get to meet Carrie? Now he's, he said it's going to be a real interesting story. <laughs> so believe so, it or not, Carrie, uh, you, you know how tall Carrie, Carrie's like. Oh God, he's, he's like six foot six or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and man, he's an incredible basketball player. And, I, okay. and and a, a friend of mine, Craig Weiner, who played at the University of Tennessee, um, he uh, he he said, "Man, I got I got this basketball team. You want to because I play? I, I still shoot basketball. I still, you do? How tall yeah, are you, Rod? I'm I'm short, dude. I'm short. <laughs> I'm like I'm like five eight, five nine. Well, you're taller than like, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, and all the guys on the team, like some of them were like uh, some of them, all of them played in college. One guy. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name. He played. He played linebacker for the. Oh, Tim Harris played the linebacker for the Green Bay Packers. Oh wow! 
and he played on the he played on the team, you know. And uh, oh, wow. Kerry and uh, another uh, Tony Brooks, this other cat, it's like six foot six. And these guys were, I mean, uh, I, I played against Anthony Hardaway in, a, in like in a pickup game, you know, right, in, right, in, in Memphis, and in, in uh, but man, these guys were amazing. We went to the city tournament. And we I think we lost one year. We won this n- next year. But man, these guys were all. And Kerry was man. He's intense. He was an intense player. <laughs> but he was great. I mean, he was an incredible player. So I, I'd never bring me in when there were thirty points up. Yeah. And said, I'd just sit outside and shoot. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to play Kerry in basketball. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> he is just gigantic. That guy. Yeah. yeah. But such a you nice. Know, yeah. Such a nice he guy. is. He's a nice guy off the court. On the court, he's a beast. <laughs> he a beast. I loved it, though. <laughs> well, he's a beast anyway. Yeah. Um, me, me, and him, me and him got along really good. Um, we hung out. We just had so much fun. And uh, there was a lot of knuckleheads down where we used to live. And uh, I met where him. Did you, where did you live? Where did you over live? In, uh, when, when he was over in Apple Valley, Victorville area in High Desert. Oh, okay. Spring yeah. Valley Lake. And there was a lake. Oh, okay. there, and I had a boat. And it was, the boat was on the lake, and we'd go out for boat rides. And, and there was a little bar there called the Republic, and we would go there and drink, and then we'd hang out till like four in the morning. And then I would come home. I'd be in the lowest. Be, where, where the hell have you been? I go. I've been at Carrie's house. <laughs> and that guy can party. That guy can party. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He he's come no- down to Bill Street. He's come down to Bill Street. When we were in the house band down on Bill Street after I lost my record, and we played down there for. Many, many. It, for people to know what Beale Street is, it's like it's like Bourbon Street, only home of the blues and the and uh, R and B. You know. Okay. Maybe okay. maybe King had a, has a club down there. Jerry Lee had a Jerry Lee Lewis had a club there. Right. Yeah, but it, we were like the only rock and roll band on the street. But we played blues and R and B stuff too. But but uh, you, people would come and sit in. We were just like you'd be surprised. People would just show up and we'd get them up. Let him get up and jam. It was a blast. Well, you are are you are quite the entertainer. Uh, I can't wait to show um, you know the world, uh, more of the world, what what you're doing. And uh, I watched about five or six different reels, advertisements, and in every one of them, you are spot on. And you're oh, you're, you've got you got all the whoa 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 whoa. You know, you're doing all the dancing, and you got the you you throw the soccer ball out. You throw the soccer yeah, ball out yeah, to the yeah. audience, and the, and all the yeah. women, all the women in the front row. Yeah, and I went to see Rod Stewart with. Uh, it was at the. Uh, it was in Anaheim, California, at the Pond, and um, it's a skating rink, but they turned it into a concert hall. Anyway, a girl invited me, and I get there, and I'm kind of in the I don't know tenth row back, and I literally do not see another guy. Ten rows in, <laughs> I don't see another guy. I'm like I'm looking around, going, I can't be the only guy. Well, she had some kind of special ticket where Rod Stewart makes sure that all the women are in the front row. Oh, yeah. And then he brought them all up. He brought them all up on stage. All of them. Oh, yeah. It was like yeah. 100 of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, why didn't you tell me I was going to be the only guy? You know, I, I'm looking back. I saw, I saw a few in the back. <laughs> so Rod Stewart was really diligent about making sure that his, you know, the, the ladies were in the front row. And... Is this something that you do, or unintentionally, you know or you know what? It, it's uh, we just did a we played a winery a few weeks ago, and and uh, every woman that was there had a Rod Stewart T-shirt. <laughs> it, it's amazing! It's amazing. Uh, he, you know, women just they love they love Rod Stewart. You know, so well, I mean, he's, sec- he's sexy. He's sexy. Yeah, yeah. And it was, lucky for me, a guy with big nose and big hair. You know, you know. Yeah, you know the... I'm just, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, nothing wrong with the nose, man. Women love that shit. You know, yeah, they want that. apparently. <laughs> what else is big under there? <laughs> big under the hood. You got the big nose. What's this going along with it? But the, I don't know what it is, but, you know, there's a sex appeal to, to that Rod look and to your look. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. a sex appeal there. And then when you get on stage, you know, how can you not win? Uh, oh, yeah. Winning over the ladies. I mean, you are, yeah. you are uh, literally... When I watch you, you are Rod Stewart. And I watched nah. a couple other guys. There was a guy named Dean something. I watched him. I said, nah, nah. Yeah. That yeah. guy's not even close. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the thing is, it's like musically, I mean, we, uh, the way we put the whole show together, because I, I, I have great players in the band. 
Right. I mean, that's that's the whole secret. Uh, a friend of mine's a producer in Vegas. Uh, she told me years ago, this business isn't hard. Hire great people, let them do what they do, you know. So, and, the, and my band and I, most of the guys in my band have been playing music for like 20 years. My brother plays drums in my show most of the time, and, he, and he's a great singer. Oh, your he's brother's great. playing drums in the show? Yeah, yeah, he plays with a country artist named David Lee Murphy. I don't know if you listen to country music. That's the model, party crowd. Okay. Uh, he wrote Big Green Tractor for Jason Aldean, Are You Gonna Kiss Me Up for Thompson Square. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've heard yeah. of those songs. Yeah. In, my, in, my, in my bass player, uh, well, I have two guys that played, uh, Tommy McDonald, who played on Buddy Guy's last five records. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and uh, 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 another friend of mine, Dave Smith, who's playing with me this weekend in Memphis. Uh, he's great. He played on Buddy Guy records and Kenny Wayne Shepherd records. And he's. They're up. They're all great. All the musicians in my band are phenomenal. Well, Kenny yeah. Wayne Shepherd, you know, he's he's nothing to sneeze at. He's an awesome no, blues player. Yeah, you know? oh, Buddy sure. Guy. Yeah. I've seen Buddy Guy before. I saw him at the yeah, yeah, an amazing blues artist. Oh yeah, he is. He's incredible. He's him and incredible. Eric. Him and Eric Clapton took the stage. Oh exactly. really? Oh, I'd yeah. like to see that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. BB King was there. Eric Clapton, yeah. Buddy Guy, yeah. and I was sitting behind the drummer. I snuck in. But it was really a fun show. But I, I'm a blues keyboard player. Oh, um, really? Yeah, okay. I'm, a, I'm mainly a blues boogie woogie and uh, and deep purple kind of keyboard player. And then yeah. I do some I do some classical, and then I also write songs like Richard Marks, Brian Adams, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I, I love the piano. I just love the piano. Um, I l was listening to some of your tracks. You have an awesome uh, keyboardist. Oh playing, yeah. I mean, he's yeah. playing some yeah. unbelievable stuff. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of my videos are actually shot in Australia with the with my promoter. I He plays keyboard, Dale Jenner. He does okay. a lot, of, a lot of, in most of my videos. But there are other videos of my band here in the states as well. Gotcha. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, we're playing the Franklin Theater November third in uh, in uh, right south of Nashville here. Okay. And uh, yeah, and uh, and Katja Rickerman, she'll be there. And I, I got a new keyboard player. He's amazing. Yeah, he's a great player. Well, yeah. you can't get you can't get by without an awesome keyboardist and uh, a bass player. Especially, yeah, especially doing this music, so right. many different sounds and different styles. Yeah. Well, that that brings me up to another question. So, are you doing the early Rod Stewart, and and then he transitioned more into a more uh, what you call a classic, um, elegant Rod Stewart, where he puts on the tuxedo? Are you doing a split show, or or is your show all uh, Rod Stewart. Uh, we do, we do, we do some, uh, you know, some really, uh, we do like stay with me. We don't do it every show. We, I mean, that's the cool thing about doing, you could do like so many different right. songs and <laughs> they're all hits. So we do, we throw in like one great American song, but we do like what a wonderful world or, or, you know, something like that. Just, it, right. Cause I know a lot of people love that. They love those. That's the only time Rod ever won a Grammy, which is sad, but. Right. I mean, we do stuff like Reason to Believe, and you know, we do a lot of, a lot of. And, and do you do the old, the old hit uh, "People Get Ready" with Jeff? Bell. Yeah, yeah, we do that in our show too. Yeah. Um, in yeah. fact, I've been wanting to pull that up more lately because this, you know, Jeff Beck passed away. It seemed like it would be a great tribute to him. You know, it would be a great tribute to Jeff Beck. Yeah. Um, just yeah. to do. Have you done that when he did pass? Oh yeah, we, we, we I've been doing that. So I, back when I played bass, I used to sing and play with, with Sean Lane. If you type in. Sean Lane and the Willies, because Sean was like such a guitar okay. guy. I will. Yeah. yeah. And, and you can hear us doing People Get Ready. I'm playing bass and singing it. Yeah. Well, oh, that's awesome. Before, so you, you, you play bass and sing? Yeah. But I, I don't in my show now, but I did. I used to. Yeah. I find yeah. that difficult. I'm a drummer. I'm a drummer, and I can sing and play drums. But for some damn reason, when I play the bass guitar, I get screwed up. <laughs> it's like, it's like this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I could play drums and sing anything. I, I ain't kidding you. But when I yeah. get up the bass guitar, I'm like, I, I can really appreciate Rush, you know, like Geddy Lee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you yeah. Know, what the, and what those three guys did. Yeah, yeah. yeah we used to do stuff like Over the Hills and Far Away. And it was like, and playing this. Right, right. That's a tough one, too. Yeah. And it's like. You know, I kind of just, I just did it. I just did it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, well, there's a little coordination there, but yeah, I, think, yeah. I think you landed in the right spot because I'm, I'm guessing that you're making some pretty good money doing the tribute. 
tribute shows. You know what? That's that's the whole reason I started doing it because I, you know, I got to the point I felt like I was burnt out trying to get a record deal. There is no really record deals anymore. But no. I still I still write. I'm a songwriter as well. I mean, oh. you, you type in Rob Cottle originals on Google or send you Reverb Nation and hear some songs. Okay. Some, some, uh, yeah. So you're also yeah. a songwriter. Um, what instruments yeah. do you play? Do you play all uh, these? Instruments? I play I play guitar. I write write, write mostly on guitar okay. now because you know bass is kind of boring. I hardly, hardly even pick up a bass. <laughs> Do you play piano? Do you play a little bit of piano? Uh, a little bit, but you know I'm the three three fingered kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. Well, you know, I just figured you know being a musician like you are, you got such a great voice and your range. Have you always had that range? Um, you seem to be able to hit all of the Rod Stewart notes from like three or four octaves. You know, have yeah, you always, have you yeah. always had that? Yeah, uh, yeah, not going to but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And did I you mean, know you had... AC, AC, DC stuff and oh yeah, yeah, and stuff and black. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, have, did you know this in high school when you were growing up? Did you know you had a voice? No, I, no? I was basically too shy to. You know, I was a surfer, dude. I was okay, I was more like Jeff. Jeff Spicoli in high school. Did <laughs> you know. smoke a little dupe back then? <laughs> oh, I did for like a whole year of my life, and then I had to quit. I never knew I would never get out of high school. So That's funny. Yeah. I, you know, I, I never was a big pothead in high school, and uh, I used to hang out with them. You know, all my friends yeah. smoked pot, and I was the only guy who didn't. And then when I got in, when I got in the band, all the whole band smoked, you know, and I'd go in the studio, and it'd be like completely just smoked out. And I would get high just from sitting there. I go, guys, I got to sing tonight. I, I can't remember the lyrics. I'm getting... <laughs> yeah. The only, the only time I ever got high down on Bill Street when I was fronting the band was uh, Warren Haynes came in uh, one night. He sat in with us and he said, and he, he was doing an Almond Brothers record uh, at Arnett Studios. Right. He goes, you mind if I bring an amp tomorrow night and sit in? So he got his roadie bring an amp in. He played all night with us. And on break, we went up to a, a rock and roll, rock, I think it was rock, 103 was behind on Bill Street up the you know, stairs. And, and uh, a friend of mine, Greg Davis, who's a drummer now, um, he was uh, he, he was the DJ. So we went up there and uh, and I said, Warren, let me buy you a drink. He goes, if there's some place we can go and smoke some weed, I was like, so I took him up to the radio station. And him and me and my brother, Greg, we all got, and I don't smoke pot. It's, and I was, I was yeah. so high. And I, <laughs> trying to front of band, talk to a crowd and, and sing, yeah. I was like, hated it, you know. But that was, with the Warren Haynes, it just seemed like a, a, a you know, natural thing to do, you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah when you, when, you know, I never had a problem with it, but I, I never, I never got into it because, you yeah. know, I was a singer, I was pretty much a singer since day one. I was keyboards and I played drums and I played guitar, but my main thing was play, uh, singing like you and uh, yeah. I was always yeah. taking care of my voice and now I can't imagine how many shows no, yeah. I, I was doing maybe three or four shows a week, but back then. But how many shows are you doing right now when you're on tour? Uh, let's say in a six month or, or a month or in a whole year. How many shows are you doing? You know, I don't even know. I never even count. Like it's been really, really busy this year. You know, it's been really busy. Uh, we I did two months straight with Legends in concert. Okay. Because we did. I think we only did five nights a week. We did a gig in Wisconsin, but we played in Atlantic City and Cleveland, Ohio, and played some place in California but and we did probably for the two months we probably did almost six nights a week five six nights a week but we just recently did a show at this place called the Orange Blossom Opry in Weirsdale Florida it's like yeah. this cool little 500 seat theater in the middle of nowhere uh -huh. and we did uh, we saw that the first show they said uh, we'd like to add another show and they you know I was like Okay, so we sang, I sang like an hour and 45 minutes in, in the afternoon with no sleep. And then uh, mm, that night wow. I did a two hour show. Oh my gosh. And, you know, luckily my voice made it, but you know, I mean, I've been, been blessed with a really strong voice. I always have been. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I can reflect back. I, I had some vocal coaching. I had to get some vocal strengthening because I'm, I'm a hard singer also, an ACDC type, you know, yeah, yeah. screaming yeah. my ass off, you know. And I was losing my voice. I played out in Cabo Wabo. Uh, Van Halen flew us out there. And I, I lost my voice on the last night. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And, of course, I was drinking and, you know, not taking care of myself. <laughs> but but for you to play, you know, six, Rod Stewart's voice, he does get up He does get up there. You know, he's starting, he screams. He gets up there, and, you know. And uh, it's got to be difficult for you. Have you ever had a, a, a point where you said, i got to cancel a show or anything? 
because you lost your I've voice. never canceled a show, but I should have a couple of times. <laughs> like, actually, I lost my voice in Seattle a few months ago. When I got back from Australia, I, I, I've been fighting a sinus infection. It seems like this whole year has just been like, I've been in, uh, I went to a voice specialist at Vanderbilt, and they put me on prednisone and antibiotics. Yeah. And uh, and I lost my voice in Seattle. Luckily, I was doing it with this friend of mine. That just, she's an amazing Tina Turner. Her name's Cookie Watkins. Wow. And it, thank God it wasn't just my show. We, you know, we split it up and you know, oh, okay. we did two months of stuff together. I made it through, but man, my voice, it, it hurt. It physically hurt, you know. But you made when it I came through. Back, yeah, I made it through, but uh, it was scary. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you know, you when can, you, yeah, you, when you your can't, voice isn't yeah, it's a scary thing. Well, you can't yeah. put your voice in a, in a guitar case or in a, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> and, and put it away for the night. You know, you got to yeah. take your voice with him, especially when we're out. When I was, God, when I was partying in the in the teens, I was, you know, drinking and doing blow and everything. And man, I I get up in the morning. I, there's no way I could sing two days in a row. Yeah. You know, with that with yeah. that kind of partying going on, you know. Yeah. And yeah. singing singing like you do and singing like I was doing, I think it's pretty incredible that you're doing that many shows and and, yeah. and being able to do the shows. Yeah, and the weird thing about it is. Uh, uh, it, it seems like the more, of course, the more it's like any other muscle. The more you sing, the better off, you know, the stronger your voice gets. But um, and sometimes I think it makes me sound more like Rod. I still sing everything in the original key that Rod does. Yeah, so, I noticed yeah. that because I was I was yeah. playing along with you. I was playing yeah. along with you, and you were in the yeah. real key. You're in the original yeah. key. Yeah. I was reading a little bit about. Let's see. I'm looking at that uh, CME article, Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee. And they talk about, let's see here, you've been, it says, all over the world, including China, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Cambodia, Indonesia, Sweden, Finland, United States, Japan, Canada. And then when it says, when he leaves town, he is armed with his Tonight's the Night Band, a repertoire of more than 100 Stuart songs, covering everything from the beginning years to the great American songbook and a wardrobe of loud suits, he claims. <laughs> yeah. And then says, I've got the greatest job in the world, making a living, doing something I love. Yeah. And Be very blessed. Very blessed. Yeah. That, that's a great, yeah. that's a great comment right there. So yeah. tell me, what was your favorite country to play in other than the United well, uh, States? If you had to pick one, probably, probably Australia. Okay. You know. But I, I'll tell you, uh, but I've, I mean, I've been a lot of, beautiful place. I love going, you know, Indonesia is beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. well, I was in Bali. Bali's oh, wow. amazing. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I love to uh, go to Bali. Uh, Singapore. Uh, you ever see, you ever seen that big giant ship? It's like with, the, it's, it's three hotels and they built, a, it looks like a giant ship on top of it. And we, uh, we play. I may have seen it. Google it. Google it sometimes. Will. It's like the most amazing thing. And we played on the very tip of the ship. Like oh, how cool. I love it. Yeah. Overlooking Singapore. I don't know how, how many floors it is. But it's, it's like this huge, and it's right on the water. It's incredible. Incredible. But it's not a real ship, right? It's no, 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 no. It's just, just, a, it's just shaped like a ship. Shaped like, like a ship. Of, yeah, over the top of these three hotels. It's a big casino. It's called Marina Marina Sands Hotel. Yeah, okay, I'll have to ship. check that out. Yeah. Now, have you yeah. done any concerts on the ocean uh, on a cruise ship? Um, I've done, a, I did some stuff in, uh, on the Baltic sea and I did, I did, uh, a cruise ship thing. Um, uh, they flew me to New Zealand and I went, uh, I'm sorry. They flew me yeah, to New Zealand and, uh, and I did like all the way up through the fjords and all that. And then we okay. went to, uh, um, uh, I can't remember the other place. And then we got off in Australia and they flew me home. But I, when I did it, I, it wasn't my band. And it was, these guys were not good players. It was like, <laughs> it was like. Uh, were they like session players or just freelance? No, they were just, they were just, you know, cruise ship players. Okay, you know? gotcha. And I'm sure some of those cats are great, but this band, it's like they had never heard any of this music. They, they were reading charts. Oh, yeah, like okay. 45 minutes before you did a show. And it, it, was, it wasn't a good experience. And after that, I was like, mm, I don't know if I really want to do that. You know, so if you I were could take of... my band. Yeah, if I could take my band, I would love it. But I. If, if, if you know, when I played in Bali one time, I played with all these cats. They sent them the music, and not one of them spoke English. <laughs> and so I had a rehearsal that day of the gig, and I was like taking the guitar, and I was like, "Here, here's what you know. <laughs> you 
you know, oh. I was trying to show them how to play the parts. And here's the bass player. It goes like this. Oh, no. Guys. You were on but your they, own. Yeah. So it was like pulling a, pulling a railroad car down a track. It was like, oh, uh, my God. Uh, you know, and I've been there. I've, I've gone yeah. there. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just show up and everybody's supposed to know your songs and yeah, and um, it, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. does. It's I, not I, the I same. Much, yeah, I, I don't do it anymore. It's just too. It's too hard. I have a lot. Of, yeah. Can't you? Can't you? Can't you do it cheaper? Can't you bring bring in people that can read charts? I said, you know what? It's too hard. You know, even if you got your own band, you know, you know, if you have the sound, you know, because we don't we don't take backline or anything. We just fly. We pretty much fly everywhere. So now that now you picked up the guitar there. Now I saw you playing a mandolin. Maggie yeah, May. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you playing that mandolin? Yeah, 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 yeah. I so you that. play the mandolin, which is a difficult. Well, I know instrument. Maggie May. I play Maggie you know, May. If yeah, I but it sounded it good. It sounded good. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I'm watching you. Know, well, he plays guitar. He plays the mandolin. Yeah. <laughs> I have one sitting on my wall right here. It's a teardrop, eight-string yeah. mandolin. Oh yeah, yeah. The only song yeah. I know is Maggie May. <laughs> oh really? Well, next time when I'm playing, you can come sit and play. <laughs> well, well, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Um, Actually, a friend of mine, Doug Bruin, who did my, um, he's like does Alan Jackson and he does Brooks and Dunn. He does Ronnie Dunn and the Brooks and Dunn tree. He okay. actually uh, he played mandolin on my show one time, and after I heard the organic, somebody actually playing it, I went out and bought one. I said, I got to, I've got to play on that. You got to play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and you and you play it very well. Um, yeah. And you've got a great band, by the way. Oh, oh, they're amazing. How, and how wonderful many, human beings, you know. How many pieces the, a band is that uh, you got? Usually, Singers? usually I yeah I, usually I take a, a, a like a five or six piece band out. Yeah. Sometimes you, we add a violin player. Yeah. Okay. Which I love doing that. It just depends on the budget. That has a lot to do with it. So usually, so it may change from uh, venue to venue. Yes, yeah. But usually my staple is like a five piece band. Yeah. Five piece guitar, keyboard, bass, drums, and sax. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. you talked about the sax player. Is that your constant sax player, the same same person that um, plays with you? I try to keep get Katya most of the time, but she's busy doing other things okay. sometimes. That's the blonde? Yeah, is she blonde? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have another girl, okay. uh, Patty. Uh, uh, this other other girl who plays with Phil Vassar. She plays great. She plays great sax too. She's actually a keyboard player. Uh, pa yeah. Patty Costantino, and okay. she's beautiful blonde too. You know, so oh, wow. they see a hot blonde on stage. Plus, it's you know, gives the gentleman something to look at as well. So. Oh, absolutely. There you go. Give some. Give yeah. the guys something to look at, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I mean. But you know, I, you got to admit, Rod Stewart's all about the women. I mean, you know, what a great, what a great uh, tribute band to play in. I mean, you got to yeah. love, you got to love the reaction from the audience, especially the yeah. the crazy women that just love Rod Stewart, and they love you too. You know, for yeah. performing him. How do you yeah. feel about that? Do you get you get that well, kind of a a little buzz, like man? Well, you know what? Anytime you get attention from a woman, it's always a buzz. <laughs> Are you, you are you, or not? <laughs> now, are you married or are you? Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm single. I'm normally, single. I don't ask that question. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I was seeing a, I've been seeing a girl in Australia for the last six years. But Really? Uh, wow. Yeah, but but uh, we kind of decided it was like such a long distance thing. Is, you know, um, but when we see each other, it's great. We don't see each other. I mean, we talk, we chat on the phone. You know? the, the women are beautiful in Australia. you got to admit yes, that. Yes, they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, Lois yeah. is from Australia, and uh, well, she's not from there, but she was there for like 15 years. She's an actress. She was in The Punisher. She's been in over 150 commercials. So she's oh, wow. uh, she's the actress in the family, and I'm the musician in the family. And wow. we, we actually both work from home. We work on uh, backstage. We work on. Uh, I do uh, voice overlays. I use my recording studio for her, so she can do audition tapes. And we use the green screen for uh, special, you know, so we, we actually make a living working from home. Good for you. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my other option was to go on. Uh, I was thinking about doing John Mellencamp. Someone said I was wearing my hair used to be kind of long like John's. Uh -huh. And I got this leather jacket. And this guy comes up to me and goes, you look just like John Mellencamp. And I go, oh, man. And, he's, and, I, and this guy says, let's do a tribute band. And I'm thinking, and I started thinking, if I'm going to do a tribute band, I am not going to go do it half-ass. I'm not just going to go put on a jacket and be John. 
I'm going to have the violin player, the two drummers, there the, you go. Yeah. the percussion. You know, I'm going to do yeah. the whole thing right, like like you're doing with Rod Stewart. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and when I look at your stage, I, I saw 15 or I saw at least 15 people up there with the backup yeah. singers. You have yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we have done shows like that. Yeah, also. Yeah. You but, you do the big show. Yeah. You do the big yeah. show. Yeah. And, and if people that come to see you are going to be amazed. I'm just amazed. And you put on a fantastic show. And uh, all around the world, you're playing. And uh, you're right up there with the top. You're right up there with the top tribute bands. Well, in you're very good. In America. That. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I've yeah. been looking around. I'm like, this guy is so awesome. <laughs> and I told Carrie that the other day. I go, man, this guy's unbelievable. Um, and, and, and what I want to do is uh, promote your uh, future tour dates. Um, right. yeah, yeah. So, if, sure. are they listed on your website? Yes, yes, uh, yes. And right now, we're actually looking uh, for an agent. Uh, we got have a gentleman um, over in Europe that wants to get the. He can get the Rod Stewart Fan Club behind us, but we're trying to do some dates in July and August in in Europe. So, oh, okay. Yeah, but we're looking for an agent, uh, a, a a good agent. Which, <laughs> you know, you know the deal, but yeah, one that's not going to. Yeah, take your money, not pay you. Yeah. <laughs> and not do the not job. Really, I haven't, haven't had that happen yet, but yeah. yeah. Well, it, yeah. it happens all the time. Oh, you know? I know. And, and what yeah. and what I what I what I'm amazed is, especially now today, when I reach out and try to talk to somebody, I can't because they're, they're I'm being diverted to this other management team or an agent. Yeah. I can't even I can't even talk to the person like I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to all these other people, and they say, No, no, we're not interested. I go, What do you mean you're not interested? This is a yeah. free and great opportunity to get you know get your name out there, yeah. and uh, it, I really like talking to the artist. I don't want to talk to a bunch of people that know nothing about you. Yeah, and there's a lot of people in the music, well, as you know, in the music business that don't know anything about the business. They don't know anything, yeah. man. I just talked to Kim Wilson this morning from the Fabulous Thunderbirds. He called me. Yeah. Hey, Matt. He goes, let's do this thing. Is it today at four? He goes, can I do it from my phone? I go, no, no, it's not today. Let's do it next week. He goes, that's fine. But I'm only talking to Kim. I'm not talking to anyone else. And I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Independent oh, artists yeah. doing their own thing on their own rules, you know, um, on your time. I just, I, especially today more than ever, because we can do everything yeah. ourselves with a little bit of help here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we can be an independent artist and do what you're doing and and all the money goes hopefully it's going to you and then you know you disperse it out yeah and, and i take care of my bank as well so i'm sure you do that's, what, that's one reason that's one reason we're family you know we're absolutely yeah. Yeah. and that's probably why they love playing with you because they know you're a fair and honest person yeah yeah and, that, and, and that's uh, what it takes now we have a blast on stage we have great time we never it, lo it, it looks like it it looks yeah, like do. it. Yeah. 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 Now, now, um, okay. So when you're when you're up on stage and you're you're going through the wardrobe changes and all that, is there? I have never seen your show live, so I'm not. I have to go see it. Uh, is there a curtain pull? You go back and get changed, or is the show continuous, continuously, just you know, high energy through the entire show? Are you yeah. are you it's, going behind and getting yeah. changed and coming back out? How do, how does the show yeah. go down? Yeah, it depends on the venue. Sometimes they want they want an intermission, which okay. makes it easy for me. But other, right. if we don't, like we do, like a ninety minute straight show, um, the band I'll get the band and jam on something, and I'll run off stage and change, and then okay. we're back on. Yeah, which is very stressful. You know, so. well, yeah, because it's not like a rip off suit, is it? Where you rip off one and no, the other. No, 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 no. <laughs> Take your shirt off. Take your shirt off. Usually, I, I, I just a jacket by that time, anyway. But, you know, yeah. it reminds me of back rock and roll with um, David Lee Roth with Van Halen. I mean, all the he did a lot of costume changes for a rock and roll singer. Really? You know? yeah, I, I never saw Van. Halen. Oh yeah, you know, he'd come out in the gold, you know, bell bottom outfit with the swords and the ribbons, and he'd go yeah, back and yeah. change. And I'm like, well, how does he get changed so fast and come back out and jumps off the drum stage? And you're kind of doing that. You're, you know, you're doing yeah, instant. Yeah instant yeah. it's got to be a lot of work it's got to be a lot of work I'm you know, thinking. And, and, yeah yeah it, it, it is a lot you know what uh this past oh this past not this past weekend the weekend before last uh we did a sh we did a show and it was really we it was like the place i was talking about orange blossom opera it was in the middle of nowhere so it was really expensive to fly in orlando so i flew the band into tampa 
Well, I try to have to coordinate everybody's flight to try to come in because coming from different cities. And uh, the sax player, Katya, her flight was supposed to get at 540. And we, my guitar player and I got about 1230, you know, in the afternoon. So we were going to hang out in Tampa till she got in. Then we we're going to go towards Orlando. Well, her flight got messed up. So I went ahead and drove back to the hotel. I didn't <laughs> sleep the night before. So, you know, and then I had to turn around and drive and go pick her up. We got mm. back about 1.30 in the morning. We had a 10.30 in the morning sound check. So it was like, ugh, you know, just running on empty. And, I, you know, I'm the MD and I'm the road manager mm -hmm. and, I'm, you know, I'm the travel agent, so I do it all. But, so you are pretty much uh, Rod Cottle Incorporated yeah, yeah. or whatever. You, yeah, do, every, yeah. you do everything. Okay. Yeah, I do everything, yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's nice it, to have a little help once in a while with yeah, some of yeah. that well, stuff. Yeah, but you know, like a lot of times, my brother he'll rent, he'll rent, rent a car. I've, he's got sure. one of my you know American Express cars, so he rents it. I pay for it. Right. But uh, but like one one time we were doing a gig in California, and and Dave Smith, the bass player, uh, I was using a bass player and a drummer from Memphis. And right. Dave, Dave, Dave calls me their flight because we always fly in the day before. I don't like flying day of show; it's too dangerous. Gotcha. And he goes, uh, he calls me, he says, "Hey, hey, Rob." Um, you need to call your people and tell them that our flight got canceled, so we're going to have to fly in the morning. I said, dude, I am my people. <laughs> I'm the other people. <laughs> but I got a kick out of that. That was pretty funny. You got to call your people. Hold on, hold on. Rob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob, yeah. Uh, no, you don't. I'm over here. <laughs> you know, that's so funny because, uh, you know, back in the 80s, I'm going back late 70s and 80s, you needed to be signed to a record deal to get yeah, your music yeah. heard, as you know. And remember what it used to cost to get one CD, like printed, recorded yeah. and printed? It was like $1,000 when you had to get it recorded, mastered. You had to have it mastered. And then I needed a copy. This I'm going back to early 80s. Yeah, it was like uh, five hundred thousand dollars, and and each band member got one CD. That was our demo, and we yeah. got to we got to show it to people. That was it. And to get yeah. a video, you know, to get a video on MTV, you, you kind of had to be signed, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And so now today, fast forward to today, we can do a video, we can do our own demo, our own reel, put it out. Your reels look amazing. Yeah. I checked out every one of your reels are really good. Are you doing the production on those? Um, some of them, yes. So, so a lot of times people just put stuff out there, and like I'm like, ooh, I don't know if it should be out there or not, you know. But yeah, yeah. But that, some of the stuff just like uh, put together a lot of that stuff. So I, somebody's I putting. Do. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Uh, because my I put. In, yeah, yeah. My promoter in Australia. He's him and I are in business together. So we, when I first went there, I think the, after the, the end of the first tour, we ended up. He said, oh, let's, let's rent this theater and do this. So we did, we were doing a show there anyway. So we hired a camera crew to come in. And that was one of the first promos that we did in Australia. You know, he's real, he's a real stickler. About he's he's a wonderful, wonderful, friend, dear, dear friend of mine. And he's a great organizer. Yeah. That's awesome. And like I, I go back to Australia, people are just amazing. They're yeah. The nicest people in yeah. the world. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a very good experience in Australia. I was there for 28 days. And uh, I remember I was going up to the airport, and this guy grabbed my luggage and goes, Come on, mate. Come on, mate. We're going to go up the stairs. <laughs> and he ran up three three flights of stairs. And he goes, Come on. Come on, mate. And I'm running. I'm going, If that had been L.A., they'd have been stealing my bags. You know, <laughs> they'd have been stealing my bags. It does so, feel really safe under there. <laughs> no, I felt really safe, this guy, and I followed him up, and he says, all right, and I said, oh, thank you, and he, he ran off, and he had to catch, yeah. uh, catch a, we were going up to the terminal, the bus terminal. Yeah. The airport, yeah. from the subway to the airport. And I, I really like, and I, I hung out on the Central Coast. Yeah. So, and we were with friends, because Lois uh, worked for Warner Brothers in Australia. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And she was in uh, a, a few shows, you might know in Australia, um, and there's a, a show called Exchange Lifeguards with Christopher Atkins, and it, it became uh, wild. Oh God, I can't remember. And then she was in The Punisher and some other stuff. But it was with uh, uh, played on Ocean's Eleven. Uh, Elliot Gill, Elliot Gill, who oh, was in okay. Mash, she was in Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. She played yeah. with she played the wife of Elliot Gill. And oh wow. And, wow. Her, and Christopher Atkins, who was in Blue Lagoon, was her son. 
So oh, wow. Lois is a very uh, uh, announced uh, ac- actress in Australia. Yeah, well, you know, Rachel Rachel Ward, and what's I, I can't think of her husband's name. Rachel uh, Ward, yeah, yeah. She lives she lives in the same uh, northern beaches of Sydney. Yeah. Okay. And you know, yeah, and and of course uh, Chris Hemsworth. I think he lives in uh, Byron Bay. That's right. Know, Lord, yeah. Lord there's, you know, there's, yeah. You know, and there's some great musicians. You know, one of the biggest honor I got. Uh, had uh, when I was there is I got the, the, one of the guitar players that plays in, in uh, the show when I work in Australia, he's Leo Sayers guitar player. Oh, really? And, and I was growing up, you know, first started playing bass and singing and stuff. I, you know, Leo Sayers was like my, one of my vocal heroes. I, wow. and, and I told, I, I told, I told this cat, I said, man, if, if he's ever anywhere near, I'd love to meet him. And we were playing, we were playing in, uh, in Queensland at a place called twin towns. And okay. And we played uh, we played on a Saturday night, and the girl I was seeing we we stayed we we were gonna stay uh, we stayed Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And uh, he he comes up when we were eating breakfast. He said, uh, "Leo's over here. Do you want to meet him?" I was like, "My gosh, yeah." He was playing that Sunday night. So and then after the show, we got to hang out with him for a few hours. And I mean, ah, oh, one of the biggest thrills of my life. What a nice, you know. He's actually English, but he lives in he's been in Australia for years and years and years. And it was so cool. You know, we, we'd sit there and drank backstage for like three or four hours and <laughs> told all these stories about hanging out with the Stones and the Beatles, you know, when they were all coming up in that English scene. It was really, really interesting. What a, what a wonderful cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now what was your, what was your most exciting experience uh, as a musician, uh, playing with someone or just being on stage? Can you pinpoint one exciting moment in your career that you'll never, um, for, that you'll never forget? Um, probably jamming with Joe Walsh the first time. Yeah, that was fun. And when John Entwistle came up and played my bass. Oh, my, my. My two twin SVTs. <laughs> and I'm like 10 o'clock. You know, that was the loudest I played. Of course, Sean Lane, the guitar player. If you, if you don't know who Sean Lane is, look him up. Yeah, no, no, I know Sean Lane, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sean played super loud. And when John got up. And I, I kept mine on 10. He turned it up to like three. And I mean, it was, I was like, oh, my yeah. God. But, you know, yeah. and I stood up and sang. And, you know, it was always oh, amazing. That's incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What are, what John are, what was are, like my base hero, you know, so. John Entwistle. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. met him at the Rainbow down in Hollywood. Uh, Bill Gazzari was good friends with John. And he introduced me to him. But that's the one time I got to meet him. What a nice guy. I was hanging out yeah. with him and him and Eddie Van Halen. Uh, wow. super, super nice guy. Yeah. It was, it was like we we're all sitting in the booth there having a pizza. And Bill Gazzari grabbed me and goes, Come on, kid. We're going to go down to the Rainbow. I'm going to introduce you to my friends. And I was oh, what? I was probably 16 or 17. You wow. Know, barely cool. old enough to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Legally. You know, just, yeah. But what, what, a, what, a great, uh, what a great thing to be a, uh, up, an entertainer, performer, uh, an artist, and, uh, and, uh, to be able to survive it and talk about it. And, yeah, uh, the, and yeah. the stories are amazing. I talked to a guy named Mick Clark who, who, who was in John Entwistle's band. And if you, if you look back at some of my podcast shows, look for Mick Clark and you're going to hear some amazing stories about uh, Paul McCartney. Um, yeah. Long, Long John, uh, Paul, what was Bal- it? Long John Baldry. Baldry. He was playing with Baldry. He was the guitar yeah. player for Baldry. Oh, um, wow. Wow. Mick, yeah. Mick Clark. I don't know if you heard of Mick Clark. No, I'll, ch- I'll check. Definitely check him out. Yeah. And and uh, uh, everybody was kung fu, uh, kung fu fighting. Les, what's his name? Uh, the guy who sang. Uh, everybody was kung fu fighting. Oh, um, I, I, I know the song, but I wouldn't know the <laughs> Anyway, I'm just drifting off. But let's talk about what you got coming up, and what do you want people to know about what you're doing now, and what what are you doing in the near future? And I am going to put some links at the bottom of the podcast show so people can uh, click, find your website, find your tour dates, find if you have any merchandise for sale, anything like that. Uh, what do you want the people to know out there, and how, how can they find you? No, my, my website's rodstewartshow.com. And, rodstewartshow.com, as it's yeah, spelled. Dot, dot, okay. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and you can go on the click on to uh, the dates. It has the dates. Uh, I think this weekend we're playing a festival in Memphis. It's called the Fall Fest. We're playing outdoor venue uh, this weekend. And the following weekend we're playing 
I think we're playing Claremont, Florida, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Without great. At and we're playing here in um, we're playing here in in what Franklin, Tennessee, on November third. Yes. Oh, how exciting! Yeah. So yeah. all those tour dates are on the website then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have this, we don't have this stuff, stuff posted for Australia yet. Uh, in fact, I probably wasn't even supposed to say anything about when we're touring. We <laughs> haven't really released that information, but That's it'll okay. be up pretty soon. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, th yeah. this this uh, podcast uh, will be released uh, uh, October twenty second. Okay, cool. Very cool. Yeah. So October 22nd, yeah. and then it will uh, be released at, I think, 6 o'clock p.m. Okay. I picked a time okay. where people can get their snacks and uh, early enough to, if they, they can go to bed early, and uh, yeah. that's Pacific Standard Time, so I'm not sure what time that is in Australia. Um, I try to pick a time where someone might be home and they're not out yeah, working. Okay. Yeah. But, hey, can we take a short break? Can we take actually, a short break? Actually, we're wrapping up right now. Really? We're Perfect. Okay. We're, wrap, we're wrapping up. I want to thank you for joining the Dean Von Music Podcast Show. It's been a pleasure. And it's been a pleasure I'm, for me also. Pleasure to meet you. Okay. And uh, you you're look, friends with Carrie. You're good people. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping Carrie would uh, chime in on us and say hi, but uh, that never happened. But listen, I want to thank you for um, coming on the show and uh, enjoy the rest of your sure. tour. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Talk to you later. Yeah. Bye bye.